In this video, we will tell you what non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is, what the causes are, and also talk about the mechanism underlying the progression of this disease. We will not always say non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, but also say shortly NFLD. This is an umbrella term that comprises steatosis and non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, in short NASH. Steatosis is defined by the accumulation of fat of triglycerides in hepatocytes. Yes, even though adipocytes are my preferred home, they sometimes get quite tight and sticky. That's when I go on the run to find a secondary residence. The liver is a good shelter where I can stay as long as I want. Well, Ali, unfortunately you don't belong there. The buildup of fat in the liver causes liver inflammation and cellular damage. This leads to NASH. As Ali just mentioned, a lot of the fat is coming from the adipose tissue. But Ali, can you explain how that works? Yeah, of course. In this unit, I learned a lot about the adipose tissue. Under normal, healthy conditions, we have insulin-sensitive adipocytes, where insulin is capable of inhibiting the breakdown of fat. I know now that this is called lipolysis. However, one of the key features of the metabolic syndrome is insulin resistance, which leads to an unregulated lipolysis and therefore free fatty acids spill over into the blood, which end up in the liver. Yes, therefore, adipose tissue lipolysis is an important source of fatty acids that promote NAFLD. But let's talk a little bit more in detail about steatosis. As we say, steatosis is the accumulation of triglycerides in the liver. In histological sections, this can be seen as vacuous, which look empty under the microscope. There are two different types of steatosis according to the size of the vacuous. Macrovesicular steatosis, which is characterized by large vacuous and it is actually caused by the metabolic syndrome and microvesicular steatosis, which is characterized by small vacuoles and is also normally caused by drugs and toxins. In the exercise, you can find the histological criteria for the diagnosis of steatosis. Here we would like to mention that a slight or moderate level steatosis can still be reversed and is considered benign. However, steatosis is often just the beginning of progressive liver disease, which after NASH includes NASH with fibrosis, cirrhosis and ultimately liver cancer, which can lead to liver failure. We already talked about steatosis and NASH, but what are the main characteristics of the more advanced stages of the liver disease? Untreated NASH or liver inflammation can lead to scarring of the liver or fibrosis, which we know now is characterized by collagen deposition. This can already affect the liver function because it restricts the blood circulation across the organ. I am an expert in blood flow. I am sure you will hear more about that in the unit about the heart. But let me ask here, is that really a problem? As I am aware, the liver is the only organ with the capacity to regenerate. Why is it not just healing itself? This is true. Liver cells have the ability to regenerate. However, once healthy hepatocytes are replaced by scar tissue, those parts of the liver are not able to regenerate any longer. All in all, is liver fibrosis still treatable? Yes, when it is detected early enough. However, that is sometimes really hard to diagnose because patients, even with moderate forms of liver fibrosis, might not experience any symptoms. The next stage of liver disease is connected to cirrhosis. This stage refers to severe and irreversible scarring of the liver tissue. Similar to fibrosis, cirrhosis-related symptoms might also not appear until the liver is severely damaged. If they appear, they include pain and discomfort, fatigue, 
appetite lost, yellow decoration in the skin and the eyes, fluid accumulation in the abdomen, and an itchy feeling around the liver. The last stage in liver disease is hepatocellular carcinoma and liver failure. The exact cause of liver cancer is unknown, but most cases are associated with damage and scarring of the liver. At this stage, the complete liver stops functioning and cannot be repaired neither by its own nor by treatments. Therefore, the only option for recovery is liver transplantation. Metabolic syndrome is not only the cause for the progression of liver disease, but significantly contributes to it. Other causes include alcohol-related liver disease, hepatitis, and also genetic diseases, as well as drugs, toxins, and infections. We reached the end of this video. Summing up, we discussed what steatosis is, the types and grading, and the different stages in the progression of fatty liver disease. And of course, the role of the metabolic syndrome in this process.